finally some sanity in this world. The mask mandate on federal transportation should be as good as gone, hopefully after today. So all the lawsuits that have been filed over and over and over again, one of them was finally heard by the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court of the Federal United States, of course, Federal United States Corporation, um, overturned the mask mandate today. So you can look that up. That's really good news. And it's interesting how it's talked about here on Fox News and the wording that they use versus CNN, uh, who seems they both say that the same thing happened, but uh, the way they talk about it is hey. quite different. Hello. Oh, it's wow. Thursday what night. Is that? You can almost taste the wheat. Weird. Okay. Next. Most of you know about fluoride being added to the water. It is the only drug that's added to our water supply. So here, fluoride is used to treat hyperthyroidism. And so do we add any other drugs to our water supply? And even if you're having salt that has excess fluoride in it, that can be really detrimental to your health if you are trying to avoid fluoride. And one of the things we continue to hear about is that this fluoride is, both fluoride and calcium, are calcifying the pineal gland, which means these fluoride ions and calcium ions are accumulating in the pineal gland. And this is true because the gland is not inside the blood-brain barrier. It's actually outside the blood-brain barrier, which supposedly makes it easier for these things to accumulate in that soft tissue in that gland. It's the only gland that gets calcified and fluoridated in this way. And it's been proven over and over. There's lots of scientific papers that show this exact thing happening. Now, the interesting thing is that I was unable to find what the effects are of calcifying the pineal. So people say the pineal gets calcified. And when they say that, they're really referring to fluoride accumulating in it. And what it also actually means is that calcium is being accumulated in the pineal and it's creating this hard shell on the outside of the pineal. And what I could find is that this happens in all animals that uh, are exposed to higher levels of fluoride, like when we brush our teeth with it and drink it in the drinking water and all the processed food that uses fluoridated water, you'll be consuming that in the food. I was not able to find the effects. So if I'm looking through a paper now, it's kind of showing like the accumulation and how the accumulation happens. And that's been proven. They've done dissections. They've looked at, you know, animals and humans and, and have found that this is accumulating at high amounts in this tissue. But their theory through all of this is that the fluoride could be reducing the production of melatonin from the pineal. And that's obviously associated with sleep and rejuvenation and cleaning up cells and mitochondria. So anti-aging as well as sleep effects. And they didn't really know if it was doing that or not. So then I looked up a few more papers. So here's another paper from uh, New Zealand. And this says, so I thought this was gonna be great, the effect of fluoride on the pineal. But then it's the effect on the physiology. They're not really understanding what it does to the body's mechanisms or the, the mechanism of the pineal at all. So it's like, oh, it, it might inhibit um, MT, melatonin synthesis in gerbils. So again, like this melatonin is, it plays a really big role in metabolism, in reproduction, in circadian rhythm. So it has a huge function and they believe that it is being decreased by this fluoridation and calcification but otherwise, you know, they presented a few things on children in pu puberty, interference with enzymes. Uh, they don't really know, like there's not a lot of good data on what happens after this fluoride and calcium get into the pineal. And that's one of the things where people tell you that it's a really, really bad thing, but they don't really show any mechanism or reason why it's bad or that it's completely unnatural, but they're are 
ways to decalcify it. So I think that's interesting. Here, this paper is showing that Alzheimer's disease may be related to calcification of the pineal. WebMD actually has some things, what you need to know about calcification of the pineal. Whatever WebMD says you need to know is not what you need to know, but, um, and if I look through this, they didn't really give anything helpful here. They basically agree that it gets calcified and that the, they claim that the causes are not the fluoride in your water. Like they just say it's because you're aging or you have a chronic condition. They, they're they saying it gets fluoridated uh, because you're getting old, not because you're drinking fluoride in the water that shouldn't be there and it's a drug. And so they say fluoridation is not a cause if you look up causes of pineal calcification, but how do you decalcify it? Avoid excess fluoride. So it's interesting. And it is interesting also on WebMD, they say reduce exposure to EMFs like microwaves, Wi-Fi routers, TVs, smart meters. That I've seen all over the place. It's interesting WebMD actually talks about that. And I would kind of ignore some of the other things that they say here. Here's another Healthline article, really mainstream. Um, how does it occur? Again, they just copy what they're seeing exactly from WebMD. So I would kind of ignore that. Here are some of the PubMed journal published articles, pineal calcification, melatonin production, aging, and health consequences. So I, tr I, I thought this would be promising, but they did not really go into health consequences. They basically say, we hypothesize it's an active process in bone formation. They don't really know. It does jeopardize melatonin synthesis, which is a really big deal. Um, but other than that, like what else could it be doing? I think it's not well studied or understood. And that's kind of important that we're fluoridating the water and we're calcifying and fluoridating the pineal gland, but we don't really understand what is happening when we do that. So highly recommend, I'm just gonna go through a couple more papers here, that you work to decalcify it. This was actually a pretty good paper by, or a blog post by Christine Northrup, who's a medical doctor. So she talks about the function of the pineal gland, you know, with, sex steroid hormone production and metabolism and reproduction and sleep. Of course, it's all important for those things. And that <clears throat> here's some signs your pineal could be calcified. I, I don't really look into this too much because these could be from lots of things, but it was good on her, her section on how to detox your pineal gland. So avoiding fluoride, not reducing excess fluoride like WebMD says, but actually avoiding fluoride in your tap water and your toothpaste, et cetera. Cleaning up your diet, so lots of organic vegetables and fruits. Uh, let's see, she says iodine, boric acid, so that's boron, so boron or borax helping to decalcify. We talked about that in our YouTube video uh, called How to Detox from Nanotech. Drinking chaga tea, turmeric, activator X, which is found in like uh, butter where the cows were fed spring pasture, not summer or fall, and reduction to EMFs, reduction of exposure to electromagnetic fields. So I think that's helpful. We have a couple videos that tell you exactly how to decalcify your pineal on our YouTube channel. You can search and then science.gov, federal science, actually talks about this as well, pineal calcification and how it affects melatonin production and the consequences. Again, I looked up the consequences and they don't really go into the consequences other than reduction in melatonin and what that can affect. So I think there could be more consequences than what people have studied or know. And I think that's really interesting, but I wanted to just share that there's lots of research out there. I mean, this is federal research that's published on pineal gland calcification. So it's a known issue. It's known that the fluoride and the calcium are accumulated there, but we don't really know what it does when it's there. And if it's really as bad as people say, like how damaging is it compared to other things that we expose ourselves to? I think that's a complete unknown. So I'm curious what you all think of pineal calcification, how it does affect our bodies and whether it's as big of a deal as people say. Let me know what you think.